I have a question related to uh, vision and uh, strategy. Uh, we have the present uh, vision uh, delivered uh, that is um, delivering uh, market position and uh, I'm sorry, leading market position and delivering um, leading performance. And uh, we have five uh, strategic uh, for uh, strategic action related to uh, organization and uh, you talk about the. Uh, culture, continued improvement, and also talk about the um, uh, organic growth and uh, bonding opposition together with uh, operation excellence. So first, where we are in terms of uh, market positions. And second question, that's maybe also your advice. For Vietnam and uh, market and Vietnam business uh, in 2017, what's it the uh, Focus action. Why are we facing with a lot of unpredicted uh, and uh, unexpected changes in the world? Not sure which unexpected change you're referring to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what I was trying to say earlier is on the the, the strategy had two phases. One was to get operationally more fit uh, and to get more healthy as a company, and then to go into the second phase and grow. Right. And if I say leading market positions. I talk about the fact that we are number one or number two in many places and in many businesses. If I talk about uh, leading brands, if I look about Interpon, if I look at International, if I look at Julux, if I look at Maxonite, these are fantastic brands that are not only in Vietnam, they're everywhere and they're leading everywhere. And as a result, with the great brands that we have, with the great market positions, with a highly engaged workforce, with a, a, a fit business, no reason why we shouldn't be number one. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we should be number one. We should be number one in Vietnam. We should be number one in other places. And then I mean number one in terms of market strength, our market position, and our market share. I mean number one when it comes to customer satisfaction. We want to tie the customer so close to us that they like us so much that they never want to leave. Right? Of course we have competition, and they're trying the same. But if we're better, they should continue to come to us. When I talk about leading performance, I talk about supply chain performance. Because right? customers will stick with us, that when they ask something and we deliver it on time, in full, every time, every day, every week, every month, they will, they will stay with us. Right? It's a big challenge, but that's when they will stay with us. Right? When we have the best advertising, when we have the best promotion, when they have the closest proximity in working with our suppliers, so that they really like to work with us as well, that they think that we are tough, but that we're also a, a, a customer that really helps them to innovate their products as well. Leading performance means that we are the company that introduces the new concepts into markets, that we're always a little bit ahead of everybody else. Right? That is what leading performance means. That is what being a number one means in many aspects. Being number one in sustainability is incredibly important. Right? So all of these things together give me a lot of trust that where we are today, we have a fantastic basis in Vietnam, in Southeast Asia, and in the rest of the world to continue in. And that's where we are. And if we look in 2017, we look at Vietnam, and I look at the big picture, it's actually pretty bright. If I look at the picture of Vietnam, and I invite a number of European countries to talk, they say, oh, oh this is easy in Vietnam. You're growing, right? <laughs> You're growing. The market is growing. Uh, of course, we have some challenges. Right? We have challenges in the retention of some of our people, right? because we educate them, uh, we show them how the business works, and then sometimes they go and work for somebody else, which is quite challenging. Right? So we need to find ways to make sure that people continue to be excited, that they really believe that when they stay with us, they can do better for their families, they can have better careers, and they can have more excitement in the business. Right? We have challenges when it comes to projects. Right? When we look at the marine business, we see a lot less big projects. When we look at the protective business, we see less projects. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't win. Because in the projects that are there, we should continue to win. Right? So I see primarily a bright 2017. I see some speed bumps. David was presenting me some speed bumps in terms of uh, what is going to slow down some of the developments, uh, what is happening in specific projects. 
But in the big picture of things, Vietnam really excites me. And I hope it excites you as well, because I think there is a great future for Vietnam. Uh, and you guys are having a great energy level. I can feel it in the room, right? <laughs> and with that energy, I think uh, you know, 2017 should be a positive year. Other questions? Uh, good morning, Tom. Uh, I'm Ho, uh, Brindium Plant Science Manager. I would like to have a question to you. I have seen uh, many good changes uh, in the past few years. Uh, they are about strategy, vision, uh, value, core principle, and purpose. So could you please tell to us how about all of them work together uh, to deliver external vision of leading market position and delivering leading performance? Thank you. How, what, what is your question? Sorry, I need to... So how all of them about the strategy, vision, right. how uh, they work purpose, to, yeah. Yeah, how, how all of them work together to, yeah. Yeah, to deliver external vision? Yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's a very good question. So what, what, what have we done in the last couple of years? We have tried to get Oxnobel closer together. Uh, when uh, I joined Oxnobel in 2012 and I was traveling the world, it almost seemed that when I came to a country, and I, in the early days I didn't come to Vietnam yet, but I think in Vietnam it was not very different, every business was saying, oh, that's a different business. Uh, I'm, I'm different. Uh, so, yes, I'm Oxnobel, but uh, uh, I am wood coatings, or I am decorative paints, or I am protective coatings. Uh, I have a different brand, and my customers think differently, and everything's different. So we were celebrating the differences of Oxnobel. And what we were trying to do as an executive committee to say, we should celebrate the things that we have in common. We should celebrate the common strength that we have. I mean, if we are 10 small companies in a country, instead of one big country in a country, I mean, from the, co the customer perspective, from the image perspective, from uh, if I am a talent that comes out of the university, do I want to work for a big company that can give me a career, or for small companies where it's very difficult to, to, to switch, right? So we said there is a big advantage on the one side to respect the differences, but to focus on the commonalities. The commonalities when it comes to the functions of finance and IT and HR, the commonalities when it comes to the customers. We have multiple businesses, and we talked about it yesterday, the powder business, the protective business, and the deco business. They talk to the same architects and the same specifiers and the same project developers. They do it at different stages, but there is more power to go as a single entity to a customer or to even use the strength that one party has and the other one doesn't have it yet. For example, if one party is very strong in projects, why doesn't the other party learn about how to work with projects? If the other party is very strong in distribution, why doesn't the rest learn about distribution from the parties? So we were trying to focus on the commonalities. And that's why the strategic focus topics that we have and the processes, they were very much driven by getting us closer together. And I think that we are not where we want to be yet, but the company is working a lot better together than five years ago. Right? And we want to continue on that journey because we can gain so much by building on each other's strength instead of focusing on each other's differences. And I think that's what you've also seen in the American elections. They've been focusing on each other's differences and it becomes very unfriendly. Right? And then you spend a lot of time repairing before they can be again. We want to focus on the commonalities. We want to focus on the strength. We want to focus to make sure that we have leading positions. And we see in Vietnam many leading positions. You presented all the leading positions to me yesterday and today. Fantastic. Uh, make sure you keep them and expand them. Uh, you have the power. You have the strength. You have the recognition. The customers like you. Make sure that it's better. We see that the operational performance of Vietnam has consistently improved. Keep going. Right. You have the strength, you have the ability, you have the processes. Ask for help if you want help from your colleagues in Vietnam, from the colleagues in the region, and if necessary, from the colleagues in Amsterdam. Right. So there's lots of things that you can draw on to make Oxenbell a better company. We've made great strides. We still have a journey to go because there's still people that worldwide are bigger than us. There's still people worldwide that perform better than us. So not everybody in Oxenbell is yet like Vietnam but we're working very hard to get there. Does that answer your question? Good, I saw questions over there on this corner. One question there.
Uh, in Axonable, we have been doing uh, country organization setup since last two years. So keeping our vision in mind. So how do you see this change? Uh, how do you feel the growth uh, after one year and down the line one year? And uh, second question, do we have a plan for similar business model in the Southeast Asia region? Okay. So what we've done indeed is to, make, to, to stimulate this cooperation and to focus on the learnings that we can have is to have slightly stronger country organizations that coordinate a bit clearer. We're not forcing country organizations in most locations. So the country organizations are facilitating the interaction, they're not forcing the interaction. And so the businesses still have a very strong need. But I always say, uh, when people voluntarily work together, it is much more sustainable as when they're being told to work together. Right? So that's why in most of the countries, we actually create the platform to learn from each other. And then it depends on the characters. If the characters want to work together, it works. When the characters say, ah, no, I'm different, it will never work. Right? So we ask also the characters to understand you almost have nothing to lose. Right? If you use the platform to communicate, to coordinate, to ask for help, uh, to go to customers together, you can only win. Uh, worst case is that you've been together with somebody and a customer and somebody doesn't buy anything. But you have another contact, you have shown the customer that you work together, this customer like it when companies that supply to them show that they work together. And because customers don't like to deal with the differences in a company that they work with. They basically say, that's your problem. I don't want to deal with this. Right? So by creating these country organizations, we have seen you know, in those areas where the characters can, can get aligned, we can see more cooperation going forward. And I think we should continue to do so. We've, uh, we have some countries where we've gone a little further one country is, is India, where we put all the organizations together in one legal entity. We put one manager on top of the legal entity and said, to accelerate our growth, we need to force the cooperation a little bit more because we can't wait for people to like each other and do it together. And it's amazing. When we've done that, the growth has fantastically accelerated. The performance of the company has fantastically gone up. So if you use that as a learning, we should sometimes force it a little more because the result has been fantastic. We've done the same for performance coatings in Brazil. The results have been fantastic. Right? So actually, by breaking through the resistance, we've only had positive examples. We've never found a negative example. Uh, some characters don't like it, but the business is doing better. Morning, Tom. I'm from uh, Internal Control Recall Vietnam. Uh, my question to you is uh, integrity is one of our core principle. So uh, in the past few years, Axon Nobel has developed a lot of programs to promote the compliance and integrity awareness from all of us. Uh, can you share with us from your point of view um, how we are doing in this area and what, what is our expectations? from all of us here in Vietnam. Right. Um, okay. So we have, we have two things that we've seen developing very quickly everywhere in the world. From Vietnam all the way to China and to Brazil and to North America and Europe, which is one, regulations are becoming tougher and tougher and tougher. And as a result, everybody needs to be aware of the regulations, so the training has to be more and more and more. The second thing is that if you don't comply with the regulations in the countries, the fines are getting higher and higher and higher. So these are two things that are difficult for a company to deal with. The third thing that is happening is that with the digital economy, digital criminality is becoming more and more and more. So whereas it's very difficult to steal from a company physically nowadays, Digitally, both as a consumer that does his banking on the internet or is buying his clothes on the internet, you are actually increasing the risk that somebody gets some private data from you that they can do bad things with. And these three things are the reason why we've introduced a lot of programs to create awareness that one, you can put the company at risk when you do something wrong and the fines are very big. And two, you can put yourself as a person and the company at risk if you're not very awake when it comes to using digital tools, either personally, on your iPad or your iPhone, 
where when you're doing a personal thing, you also have your company emails on the side. It's also the same iPhone, right? And if they get in, then you're actually running the risk as a company too. Or people that combine digital with, with phone calls where they can actually ask things from people <coughs> that they should never ask, but because we're very trustworthy people, sometimes we do things that afterwards you say, ooh, that was not very smart. So we click an email where they ask us for our PIN codes of our credit cards, because it looks like the credit card company sent us an email, but it was somebody else who just copied the way the credit card company sends emails. So we need to continue to increase the training. Okay. I am going through a compliance training myself already now. I have it on my internet. I have to work through it one by one, right? Simply because it becomes so much more important. So the progress is, uh, is good because we continuously have these trainings going on. Everybody in the world goes through these trainings. We only want to make money in a proper, correct fashion. Integrity is important to Oxnobel. We believe that only when you do business with integrity can you stay healthy as a company in the long run. To ensure long-term success, you have to have a high level of integrity. And we need to protect that integrity every day. So we will keep training people. Uh, the regulations will keep getting tougher. The fines will keep getting higher. The criminals will keep getting smarter. So we will continuously have to increase that training. Uh, but so far, the progress has been very good. Hello, Jeff. I'm Tom from Food Coping. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question for you uh, regarding to your last <coughs> point. Uh, when you talk about the engagement journey, uh, all here we can see that the result is better and better every year from 2010 to 2016. Uh, so I believe that uh, it, leadership behaviors have played a key role to drive that result. So, yeah, uh, and in Exodus where we also talk about uh, many uh, leadership behaviors. So can you please advise which ones we can focus on uh, to be successful in our organization? Okay. Yeah, what we've, we've done a couple of years ago is we introduced the values, the general values for everybody. And then we introduced the core principles, you know, safety, sustainability, and integrity. And when we looked at the values, we said, okay, uh, the values are for everybody, but of course, in every company, who do people look at as the example? It's the leadership. So the leaders need to behave as examples, and if they don't, we should be able to tell them, hey, maybe you made a mistake today, uh, but you should behave like the, the behaviors of Oxen Bell are really asking. So in the leadership behaviors, we have basically not created something new, but we took the behaviors and the values that we have, and we really made sure that the leaders are starting to act as examples. So we define them in terms of leadership <coughs> behaviors, and these leadership behaviors are being rolled out in every country in the world. And they are really just based on the cultures and the values that we have done. So leaders, of course, should stimulate winning as a team, should stimulate passion for excellence, should stimulate and be an example in putting customers first there when we can. So I've had in the last trip over here, many people come to me saying, sorry, sorry, Tom, I cannot be with the next dinner or the next lunch because I have to go to a customer. I said, no problem, customer first. Customer before the CEO. It's okay. It's okay. But go and sell something, of course. Right? Make sure that you do the right thing. But customer first, yeah, it's absolutely fine with me. Right? So from that perspective, you know, leaders need to show the, the example. Right? So that. That is really the part. And of course, what leaders need to do is they need to inspire. They need to inspire their employees to, to win, to have energy. They really need to inject energy into the people that they work with. That's a big expectation from the leaders. They need to act sustainably. They need to be examples when it comes to winning as a team, which for me, also as an answer to your question and to your question, uh, where you say winning as a team is still something that Oxford Bell can do better. We are still sometimes too separate. Uh, we are our own little entity, and if somebody wants to work with us, we go, uh, we rather do it ourselves. Right? And we need to make sure that we win as a team. That's one of the biggest ones that will make the biggest difference for Oxnobel going forward. Yes, hello, my name is I come from Mabara Cutting, Dong Mai Sai. So I have four questions. Uh, yesterday, we already know that uh, Donald Trump, he will actually become a uh, United States of America. So, immediately I see on the market go down, 
So my question does, uh, is to impact to our business and uh, the CEO how you convert the uh, difficulty to the opportunity? Well, it's, it's quite interesting what's happened yesterday. Um, first of all, it was a surprise. And the stock market doesn't like surprises. <laughs> you saw that with the Brexit, you saw it with Mr. Trump. So the first response was a surprise. Interestingly enough, at the end of the day, the market was up. So it first went up, and then during the day it came back up. So if you are living in Vietnam, you probably think, what is going on in North America? I don't know how many people in this room would have voted for Mr. Trump. <laughs> there are going to be so many, right? Not going to be so many. But it is also related to the fact that most people don't understand what is going on in North America. Because they didn't choose Mr. Trump because they liked him. The people that chose Mr. Trump, 50% didn't like him. Now, how can you vote for a person you don't like? And that's because in North America, people are convinced that something is very wrong in Washington. And they want to change it. It doesn't matter how. Uh, you know, they, they are becoming so frustrated, so frustrated, that they rather put somebody in there that they don't like, but at least they think he's going to change it, than to put somebody in there who they think is part of the system. Right? And even though Hillary Clinton is a very experienced person in running very high responsibilities, she put her whole life in serving the United States. Uh, you can believe or not believe whether she's done something wrong with the, with the emails and stuff, but it's a, it's a small story compared to what she has contributed to the United States. But she started the system. People don't believe, they believe that she's definitely better in terms of her experience than Donald Trump. They just don't believe that she's going to change it. That is what has actually happened in the United States. You know, people have really said, we don't like him, but if one of the two is going to change something, then it's probably the one where well, we don't like both of them anyway. But uh, we have to choose somebody we don't like, but then we choose for the person who's maybe going to change something. That's what they did with Mr. Obama as well. Mr. Obama was voted because they thought he was going to change something. And in the end, the system ended up being stronger than Mr. Obama. And now people think they need a stronger bomb to change something in the system. And, that, and this is so, so if you understand it, you, you may still not like it, but at least you understand what's going on. By the way, it's the exact same thing that happened in the UK. Most people don't want to disconnect from the European Union. Right? But they just wanted to change something. Right? And they're getting so frustrated that the vote is going quite difficult. Now, what does it mean for business? Actually, Mr. Trump is a, is a business person. So it's very hard to believe that he's going to do something that is very bad for business, because it will be very bad for him. Right? So overall, the reason the stock market at the end of the day is up is because he has and the presidency, and he has the Senate, and he has the House. So this, this blocking of the discussions in Washington is gone. Right? So that actually he can actually be a, a prime minister-like person, a president, that can actually have an idea and actually get it through the Congress which is not something that Mr. Obama has had for the last six years. So people think that he can actually get things done. Whether they like it or not is a different thing, but he can get things done. And they believe that he will be business friendly. Okay. And specifically, American business friendly. And in that picture, I guess the stock markets have gone up again. So overall, what the fear of people is, is that he's going to be protectionist. And protectionist is not good for Vietnam, it's not good for Holland, it's not good for many countries who have an open trade relationship. Uh, the Netherlands is a very open trade country. And every time the trade gets restricted because somebody puts in barriers, whether this is China or the United States or Russia, it doesn't matter who puts in the barriers, it's not good for business. Right? So people are not really sure, is he going to be good for business and only for US business, or is he going to be good for business in general? And most people think that if you leave the election campaign, which was a terrible campaign behind, um, he will be reasonably pragmatic. And if not he will be pragmatic, his team will be pragmatic when it comes to global trade. And I think that's why the stock markets in the end have come back up. Um, but overall, I never speculate. 
Uh, I basically say we can only wait for the first time that he holds a speech and actually tells us what he's going to do. Right? And, uh, and I hope I created a little bit of understanding, not that I have to defend him, because I don't, but uh, you know, he can defend himself. But it is important that people understand the frustration in some of the societies. Uh, and this frustration has resulted in something that is very surprising, and now we have to wait and see, like we're still waiting and seeing for the Brexit. We don't know what's going to happen. Right? It will take months to find out. And therefore, the only thing we can do as people is to focus on our business, to focus on our customers, to get better every day. It doesn't matter what he does, we will win. Right? The only thing that we can do is to do the right thing. So that is what I expect from you. <laughs> Other questions? Question over there. Hi, Tom. I am from Decorative Bank uh, Consumer Marketing. I have a question related to the sustainability. Uh, we all know that Asuno Gal developed uh, sustainability for many years ago, but uh, nowadays we can see that many companies are focusing on sustainability. So how does the Asuno Gal differentiate itself from other competitors and all this area? Uh, it's true, and if we're really honest, it's actually great that more companies are focusing on sustainability because together we can create a better world. So one of the things that Oxnabel has always tried to do is to say, we're doing many good things in sustainability, please join us. And a lot of people are joining us, right? So I don't think it's a bad thing, right? And the other thing is that it makes the competition in sustainability more intense, right? Now, we know we can win. There's no reason to doubt that we can win. Uh, so we can just continue to be ahead of the pack. Where is Oxnobel Nobel better? We spend more of our money in creating new products that truly have a sustainable benefit to our customers, as you've seen here. We are absolutely leading when it comes to cooperating with our suppliers and to say, we don't only look at price, but we also want you to behave sustainably. And if you do that right, then you can be a partner to Oxnobel. Nobel. We really do things when it comes to our creation of renewable energy, where we are ahead of our competitors. So still today, we are ahead of many of our competitors. We are clearly recognized still as one of the leaders in the industry. We are number one in many indices. Uh, we're not number one in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index anymore, but we were number one for four years. And it probably is good that somebody else is number one, otherwise they give up. <laughs> so of course we want it back, right? But uh, it's maybe not so bad to give it to another person for one or two or three years and then make sure that we have it back. Right? But that Ox Nobel is one of the leaders, was recognized in a big Singaporean conference that we had uh, two days ago, where there were more than 250 people coming to listen to Ox Nobel, how we did it. So we are still recognized very much as a leader in sustainability, and I have no intention to change that. Good. So thank you very, very much for a very engaging down hole meeting and lots of questions. Um, you live in a great country that has a great story ahead of itself. I feel so much energy in the room that I'm sure that you're going to win in this great country. And I thank you very much and I wish you a lot of success.